Welcome to The MacGuffin, episode 280. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of October 8th. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think that we're almost done with this year. I know, man. 2013 is going to be in the mm -hmm. book soon. A couple more weeks of Halloween already flies by. And it's just amazing that we're reaching that point where it's like everything is a 2013 movie, basically, yep. that we talked about, it, with isn't the exception of one Isn't film. it crazy? I, I swear it was like eight months or more it used to be the home release Oh, yeah, window, no, and now it's way, way low, way yeah, I mean, lower. Well, I mean, you know, piracy online stuff. Yeah, like I mean, that. I know why it. they've done it. It's yeah. just, it's just it's, amazing. It, that's one of those things that does make me feel like an old man. Where it's like, yeah. I remember it being the kind of thing where it's like, you'd be lucky if the other Lord of the Rings movie even came out before the second one was in theaters. Yeah, you know, and I think those were like ten to eleventh month turnarounds. I mean, so. you think about the same with like TV now. They have to get the TV seasons on DVD before the new season begins. So you know. Yep, that's true. It's a different world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. With that being said, we're going to start by talking about uh, the first mm -hmm, release of this mm -hmm. week that we wanted to discuss, and that is Much Ado About Nothing. Yes. The Joss Whedon version, mm -hmm. not the Kenneth Branagh one from yes, <laughs> yes, yes. 90 or whatever that was. Pretty, pretty excited about this one because I've somehow failed to see it in the theaters at all. Opening when night at. film of the Seattle International yep. Film Festival this year. Uh, play it South by Southwest when mm -hmm. I was down there. Obviously, this is Joss Whedon yep. coming off of Avengers. He made it in like 12 days. Yep. 12 days while working on the Avengers uh, at his house. Had all his regular people, Amy Acker, and mm -hmm. Fillion, Alexis Denisoff. Mm -hmm. Amy Acker and Alexis Denisoff were uh, interviewed on this very yes. podcast. Yes, they were. For um, Much Ado About Nothing, For they? Much Ado About this, Nothing, look yes. Look at this. Synergy. Dot in. Synergy. Go there. Synergy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's a, a more sort of modern interpretation of Shakespeare, mm -hmm. uh, more perhaps uh, general audience friendly version of it. Yeah, yeah, but I think still with the exception of one line that referenced uh, calling someone as insulting someone as a Jew, that there's a, that's yes. the only bit of dialogue that's changed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's all yeah. the original Shakespearean, Shakespearean yeah. dialogue. And Whedon is a known Shakespearean fan. Yeah, I think it's interesting that his wife suggested that he do this in lieu of a vacation because they had a 20th anniversary and he'd always been talking about it. She's like, "Wish you don't want to go somewhere. You want to stay home and make this movie with your friends. And he was like, you know, I do. Uh, but she's going to like be taking some of that Avengers money as compensation and be like, I am going to spend the shit out of this. 21st! We've got to give an anniversary flying around the world six times. You're buying me an island. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of the release, you know, it comes on Blu-ray or DVD uh, with an ultraviolet release. Mm -hmm. No whole combo pack, but you know what? Not that surprising. Um, the uh, release is pretty decent. There's a commentary with Whedon. There's a commentary with Joss Whedon and the cast. Awesome. There's a uh, Much Ado About Nothing, or Making of featurette, and then there's a uh, Bus Ado About Nothing uh, discussing their bus trip oh, yeah. across That's America right. for the promotion film of it. For the, um, yeah, film promotion. Yeah, so, uh, you know, decent little uh, release for a smallish film. Yeah. Not too bad, I yeah. mean, all things considered. I'm Pretty exciting film, too, for, I mean, uh, exciting for me to want to watch, because I'm a Wheaton fanboy. Yes, true and true. everybody so. is, yes. Hey, not everybody. Everyone's At becoming. Post-Avengers, yes, everybody yeah. is now. But pre, pre then, yeah. So, some of us used to call Buffy and Angel a guilty pleasure before I realized there's nothing guilty about it. It's just a pleasure. But. Oh, snap. In terms of the um, guilty and non-pleasure side of things, <laughs> we have the big bomb of the week. That yes. we're gonna be just, no offense to the Hangover 3 fans, we're not going to talk about that. No, because we want to talk about new bombs, not sequel bombs. Yes, and that is <laughs> After Earth. Mm -hmm. This is the M. Night Shyamalan, uh. Will Smith, Jaden Smith, um, alternate world, yeah. futuristic. Uh, uh, I think the, it's interesting that the original idea for this film was just a father and son on a camping trip. That was yeah, the initial that's what idea. I think of when I see the trailer. Yeah. The son would have made his way through the forest with the help of his father after the car they were traveling in went careening off the road. Realizing that it had greater potential, uh, producer Will Smith and screenwriter Gary Whitta decided to adapt the basic survival concept into a much larger sci-fi flick. I think the bigger problem I have is just making it around Jaden Smith. Like that, it's just really an elaborate way to just get his son a star. Yeah, people. and it's like you know, this is the first time in 20 years that M Night Shyamalan adapted a project based on someone else's screenplay, because Will Smith was really like gung ho about wanting him. Somebody to be was the a really big M Night Shyamalan fan. Yeah. Somebody had to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> somebody <laughs> still. Somebody had to still be one. It's yeah. not that someone was one, but someone still had to be. Yeah. In terms of the release, there's a Blu-ray DVD Ultraviolet altogether, so that's that's a positive, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But then there's like featurettes like a father's legacy, Will and Jaden Smith on and off screen. 
Uh, and there's also the Nature of the Future featurette, which looks at the landscapes and creatures of the movie. That's kind of cool. I mean, I, if anything, I appreciated about the trailer and yeah. the film was that it sort of had some interesting creature design yes. to it, evolving even, like realistic creatures in the future. Yeah, even though their basic concept was flawed because it's all these species evolved to kill humans when there aren't humans around for them to evolve yeah. to kill. So you know, basic evolution flaw, but it's cool. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> Scientology based, so we don't well, yeah. have to worry about that. No worries about that. Uh, uh, also, <laughs> there's a, on the Blu-ray version there is a never before seen opening sequence a new one hmm. and there's also uh, some pre-visualization stuff which you know the effects of the movie looked decent yeah. that's not the problem we're talking about exactly so if it, you, if, i think that and oblivion were kind of a one-two punch of showing that just because it looks pretty and it's sci-fi doesn't mean it's good yeah uh moving right along we're gonna go to another one that was little but with a big impact yes. and that is the purge <sighs> yes. About a uh, family held hostage inside their home on the one night, basically anything goes, yes. I believe. Yes. Um, all laws are off, I think. 12 hour period and mm -hmm. all crime is legalized. Uh, starring Ethan Hawke and Lena Headley. Mm -hmm. um, Headley, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think it's Headley. You know, it's this is for that whole, like, uh, was it Blumhouse? Productions, mm -hmm. you know, Insidious, yes. uh, Paranormal Activity, where they're like low budget films that make a ton of money that are. I guess you would say well executed. Yeah, they're they basically are. simple concepts that they try to execute well on a low budget. And they make a ton of money. Yeah. And this is no uh, difference. I mean, uh, this one, Smartway, comes in a Blu ray, DVD, digital copy, and Ultraviolet. So we get the first four fur okay. of the week. <laughs> four fur? Is yeah. that your, your coin in that? I'm coining that okay. right now. Um, but in terms <laughs> of special features, really quite underwhelming. Um, surviving the Night, Making of the Purge, is literally the only special feature. Like, that yeah. is how cheap this thing is to make, that they're like, we're not even bother getting Ethan Hawke I feel like people talking about the concept of this I, um, film was more popular than the film itself. I, w I would love to hear people talking about this film. Like, like, I remember when it came out, everyone was talking, like, on the on Twitter, was, like, going all about what they would do in a purge, but no one was actually talking uh, about whether the it purge was It was actually kind of scary. Like, I, I believe... Um, Ben Kendrick was talking about mm. it on what happened on the Screen Rant podcast, mm -hmm. and they were like, we might need to sh share some of this like, with the FBI, because people were like, I'd be like raping people and stuff like that. And so, yeah, like, it got, it got <laughs> way out of control. But this is hardly a new concept. I mean, I think yeah. back to like even just, I mean, I'm sure there are further ones back, but like The Crow and Devil's Night, mm -hmm. like the same basic premise of yeah. like one night where you yeah. do whatever you want, and you know, it's... That is what it is. Yep. Um, so, you know... If there, but there's a sequel coming. I'm, coming. I'm sure, yeah. Already in the works. Yeah. So, if you're a fan of the movie, uh, it might be worthwhile, but I'd probably just rent it if I were... Meh. You know. yeah. That's my thoughts. Yeah. So, that's not thoughts. particularly interesting. Uh, final one of this week, we're going to break in a little Criterion mm -hmm, action and mm -hmm. talk about I Married a Witch. Um, stories about a beautiful 17th century witch which returns to plague a politician, a descendant of her persecutor. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. I mean, this is from 1942. I was going to say, yeah, World War II era. Veronica Lake, mm -hmm. who people of our generation don't really have much of an appreciation of. Outside of, like, LA Confidential, mm -hmm. which had, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Kim Basinger. Kim Basinger playing a sort of version yeah, of that Yeah, kind of character. a throwback to yeah. the Veronica um, Lake-esque. Yeah, figure, beauty. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she was such a classic Hollywood oh, yeah. beauty, and this is sort of like a great example of her work. And, you know, it's such a, it's a, it's a very, I mean, it's kind of a very contemporary plot in some ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, this feels like Pretty something simple. we would yeah. see today. I yeah. mean, I could see this film being greenlit with Nicole Kidman or somebody. Don't give them ideas, Spencer. Yeah. They, I mean, there's already like 50-something remakes and sequels in the work for next year. We don't need more. <laughs> she's, in essence, she's already did that with Bewitch, so I'm really yeah, not true. doing anything too outside of the box. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea, and it's very well done. Um, in terms of the release from Criterion, it's kind of one of their more underwhelming releases. Mm. Um, it's got a new 2K digital restoration. There's an interview with director Rene Clare, who made the film. Okay. Um, don't know how old that is. But then there's just like a booklet with an essay by filmmaker Guy Madden and an interview from 1970 with Rene Clare. Mm. And that's it. For Criterion, that's pretty light. Yeah. But, you know, it's a classic film uh, with a nice res restoration. So. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. And if you haven't ever checked out Veronica, like this might be a good chance to check it out. Criterion's always a good start into anybody that whose career you don't know about because they're going to give you plenty of behind-the-scenes stuff and really be in depth and have high quality. So yeah, 
So that's it for this week. Let us know what you would like to check out. And uh, as always, you can find us at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in. We're at MacGuffinCast on Twitter, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. We're on Blip. Yes, we are. We are also on Get Glue. You can check in and get some stickers or badges and leave us some stars on iTunes. And Please do. And thumbs on the YouTubes. Comments as well. We'll yeah, hit comments. you back and uh, see you next time. The wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.